Hey, welcome in everybody to the Sports Fanatic News Philadelphia Flyers show, the grittiest take. We have two special guests today, Mike Reich, who was on away on some uh, great trips, uh, enjoying himself, and Steel Flyers, the guy, the Don of the Steel Flyers website. How are you both doing on the start of this week? I'm doing great, man. Yeah, I'm doing good. Doing good. Trying to trying to stay positive with the uh, with the current situation, but <laughs> I'm with you, fighting it hard, fighting it hard. Yeah. <laughs> That's why it makes life easier when you watch both teams and you're as big of a fan again now that you have time to pay attention to them out of college of the fandom as you are of the Flyers, and they're one of the best teams in the AHL. So I get to be happy on one end and want to throw something at my television on the other end. So, um, <laughs> Don't it, do it, that. it's, it's a, it's a very mixed, uh, back and forth, uh, seesaw type effect that the Phantoms and Flyers are having right now where the Phantoms are just love, love, love the Flyers or I hate everything that you guys are doing right now. Minus James Van Reeves, like Joel Faraby and Sean Couturier for the most part and Jerus is coming back. Um, and then just Provorov is consistently good. Uh, but like, there's not much people you go, yeah, they've been very consistently great this year. Yeah. Um, so that's been a one of the bigger issues. But we'll get into that later as we get more into the actual performances and who to watch out for on both of these clubs. Um, now we'll get into some of the rumors surrounding the team and who we think could be traded for and what positions we think. One seems pretty obvious, but maybe other positions – Mike or Steele thinks the team could also trade for us. Start with Mike on this one. What positions do you think, if any, this team should look to trade for? Uh, well, I would first say that if you don't think we need a defenseman, then you're not, you haven't seen a game this year. Um, we need a defenseman in the worst way, maybe two. Uh, and, and we need a good, good defenseman. Um, and I mean, I think I think everything else can fall into place. We keep hearing that everybody's optimistic, everybody's excited on the team. I don't know how with the current play that they're putting on the ice, but um, but yeah, we need a defenseman. Simply put, we need a, de- a good defenseman who's gonna, you know, make some plays, get the puck out of our zone, things like that. That we need a defenseman bad. So, I yeah. I agree with you, Mike. Man, I I, I got to. <laughs> I think it's not that we just need a defenseman. Like, one player is not going to make it fly, in my opinion. Okay? I think we're going to need a defenseman, and I think we're going to need some kind of a winger or some kind of a centerman or some kind of a forward who has some size, some muscle, some grit, some drop-the-gloves capability, somebody that's going to, you know— not take the fact that somebody uh, lays down coots and then elbows him while he's down. Yeah, excuse lays me. Lays down on. Lays down on. Yeah, top yeah. You gotta, you gotta have guys that have been up. Andy Andreoff in the couple games he's played has sticked up for more people than anybody on the team pretty much the entire yeah. season. And like the, he's just kind of standing around season. like this. <laughs> they have played. Yeah, he's pretty much turning into like the Riley Cote of the team, where she's yeah. like, "Oh, you know what? You get over here, you son of a look." Um, yeah. So. Uh, so, I mean, uh, he's a guy that's definitely stepped up. Um, it's a shame that a guy we had last year with the Phantoms, Curtis Gabriel, is filling in that role pretty nicely in seven to eight minutes of time with San Jose this year after they gave him a shot. Um, so that could have been helpful potentially. Um, that was a but, swing and a miss. Uh, it, 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 it is what it is. Um, he's now in San Jose, and Eric Carlson seems to love him. So good for him because that's a good guy that gets paid a lot of money, probably has a decent say in team affairs, to, to love you. So yeah. um, good for him. But back to the Flyers, I think for me, I would agree it's probably defense, but I also agree with Steele. The other thing you probably need is more grit because this team doesn't win. It's not that they – I don't agree with everyone on Twitter that says they consistently lose board battles. They do in some games. But I don't think it's necessarily the consist- they consistently lose board battles because they're not bad on the four check with like Knack and and um, guys like Limblom and people like that. It's more they'll lose some physical board battles, but it's more they don't hit people. They don't respond to hits on their guys. They don't respond. You need guys that do that on the team. That's more 
what it is. You seem to be inconsistent with board battles, but I feel like that might be more here than actually execution, where once the everybody gets in the groove of the play style again, like we did for that hot streak last season, and towards the start of this season, you might be able to see that. But I feel like it's definitely defense and a gritty uh, forward. Um, gritty forward. There you go. Uh, that <laughs> would, would help him. out the team. Like I would take Gritty. Yeah. Right, because Gritty's at least six foot something on skates. He's, he's He looks like he weighs way more than 200 pounds. Yeah, you could be like, and it could be the NHL video game where they have the NHL threes and you have the mascot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, right? Like, can, can we <laughs> just have that. somebody that big out there skating around, banging into people? Look. Well, Morton's playing damn nice on defense. It's going back to it in the minors. He might be a solution if he stays healthy to replace, like, a Braun-esque guy that can just be a basher then where Braun's really just a shot blocker and uh, stuff of that nature at this point. He could be the guy that can bat you because he's been doing that since going back to defense. He looks pretty darn comfortable since going That's back. That's what I mean. I mean, hello, that's his natural position. You know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> I wanted to say something. Uh, it's more. It's not really like a, uh, like, who do we need, but it's more of like a strategy for the trade deadline. Now, everybody's talking about just like the trade deadline, trade deadline, trade deadline. And I tweeted something about this, and I know that, you know, professional athletes, they're not like college athletes where if you sit them down and say, you're not playing well, we need you to do better. They don't take it as much to heart. But what do you guys think about making a trade, a statement trade? I'm not saying trade Giroux. I'm not one of those guys. Just a statement trade, a a guy that's well-liked on the team who hasn't been playing that well, trade him before the trade deadline, week or two before the trade deadline, and say, look, this is a guy who hasn't been playing that great. Everybody's job is up for grabs. Go out and go out there and play hard and you're safe at the trade deadline. I'm not saying threaten them, but just say, look, if you're not playing well, this is what could happen to you. What do you guys think about that? Instead of waiting until the trade deadline and then just randomly throwing a couple guys out, out the window, you know what I mean? It doesn't really send a message. What do you guys yeah. think about that? I feel like ahead, the Joe. guy it's most likely to happen with is Nolan because Nolan's in most of the rumors for Ekholm. So I feel like if we trade for Ekholm, Nolan Patrick's going. That's just my opinion following a lot of different people that kind of wrote that they think Patrick would be in that deal. And if not, it would be Frost because people still bank on his potential it, um, even through his injury and then uh, COVID and everything. Um, so – he's a guy that everyone still banks on and should bank on. So Patrick's a guy that you probably could still and should still bank on in the long future. But sometimes when you've been, and it's not because of the team, the team has always been by his side, but just in life beaten down so much in one location, like how Bobby Ryan was in Ottawa, you just have to get out. It doesn't matter how the team, like Bobby Ryan wasn't even one of those people that kind of, bitched about the senators he was not one of those people that said they treated me poorly he was one that said they actually helped me get help so it was just when you're in a situation that the town just reminds you of sadness you might have to move on or a time in your life that wasn't the best and maybe that's what it is for patrick where if that's the case it would be good for him going to nashville would be good for us getting Ekholm. i feel like patrick out of anybody would be the most likely of a like right. guy that's a riser to be moved. Because Jake it does have 18 <clears throat> points in 22 games. So if you move him, you really are sending a statement because it's not like he's playing bad. So. Now, I, 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 I've seen the rumors and I've seen all the stuff, but in pursuant to what you asked as far as making a trade before the deadline to send a statement to the team, Unless you have a willing dance partner, for one. Mm-hmm. For two, um, I don't I don't think that the team could do that. I mean, I love the idea because I, I know what you're getting at. Because mm-hmm. it would send that message like, hey, we don't care who you are. We don't care if you're, you know, Voracek or Patrick or whoever. But we don't care. We need you to play. But I just don't think logistically we're going to be able to get that to happen before the trade deadline. So what I would be thinking of something after the trade deadline, like bringing in a Johnny Goudreau, you know, and and trading a Jake for that. In the offseason, you mean? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I 
the reason why is because I don't think logistically we'll be able to get it worked out in 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 during the season before the trade deadline. You know what I mean? Because there is yeah, that issue sense. because there is that issue between Canada and United States where if you're in Canada and you're coming to the United States that's a 10 day quarantine and then mm-hmm. if you go from the United States to Canada it's 14 days. 14. Yeah. So that hasn't changed yet. Now they're negotiating that but until that happens, I don't think we're going to see anything like what we would really like to see before the trade deadline. Because I know what you're saying, though, Mike, and I really agree with you on that. And and I agree. But I think that we're not going to be able to see that until during the off season. Where, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Except yeah. for Patrick, though. I feel like yeah, but, No, but see, that's going to be part of that trade deadline deal where Patrick is going to go for Ekholm. You know yeah. what I mean? That's where I think that's going to go. I don't think we're going to get that before – the trade deadline, though, you know what I mean? Oh, a couple weeks before. Well, that's also both in the states, so you don't have to worry about it. As well. That's what I was going to say. I think there's only one real option here. I think we need to get our buddy Hextall on the phone, get a penguin to come over here, and we'll send a flyer there. <laughs> well, we, he already stole Freeman from us, so what? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like the only solution for our big, uh, our big agenda here, but... <laughs> No, I, I, I like that question though because I, I think that's a good message. To yeah, that would be a that would be a good message to send. Though I like that 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 line of thinking though. It's and I do actually think that somebody like Johnny Goudreau or even somebody now here's something that could happen potentially in season where somebody that we talked about and I'm just going to throw the name out there, but you already mentioned him, Joe, is Bobby Ryan. I mean, he he would be a really good fit to bring into Philadelphia. He's got leadership, right? He's he's got grit. He knows how to drop the gloves. He from can the score. Area. He can score twelve area, goals. Yeah. He's from the area. I mean, what? It it it's got Philadelphia written all over it. True. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, he and plays hard. He could kind of team. replace. Yeah, he could kind of replace your like Jamie said. The Flyers have been missing not always the most consistent player. He got off to a hot start, cooled off a bit in Arizona, but the pit lick that just brings that fireball mentality to your team every night. When Bobby exactly. Ryan's right, exactly. even at this point of his career, exactly. he still brings that fire mentality. And you know who else I wouldn't mind getting rid of or losing or seeing go in a trade? Raffle. It's time for him to move on. OK, it, his game is time for him to move on. OK, I'm not taking anything away from the guy, but he's not getting any younger and his production is still really low. He does do all those, you know, all those great things that like Scott Lawton's doing, but Scott Lawton's doing it and he's putting points on the board. Yeah, that's that's the issue with Raffle. That's like where I get confused, not confused, but that's where I get into a little bit of like, uh, do I do I like him or do I not like him is like. He'll win a battle on the boards, and he'll you know he'll get the puck out, and he you know he do, he doesn't he didn't turn the puck over, he brought it into the zone, and then like he he just he doesn't score goals, he doesn't assist on goals, he doesn't do anything, as far as putting the puck in the net. Like if you look, if he was like a defenseman and he had those numbers, I'd be like, all right, fine, but he's not, he's a forward. You know, That's what, what I like, mean. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think you need some guys like that on your team, though. Like, there's always still forwards on every team that are more just for their defense or just for the way they play the game like hell um minnesota's been complimenting victor rask all season he ain't even remotely close to a second line center but he just fits in well with his line mates and plays really well is able to play good defensively and it just kind of meshes well with guys when it comes to that um you have Guys, I'm, I'm trying to think of the one guy's name that that used to be on Arizona. It'll it'll come back to me, but, but see, I think uh, you have guys like you have play. guys like Jared Stoll, for example, who when oh, he was yeah. with the Kings and other teams would slide lines because they were nothing special, but he could play up on your second line on defense just because he would or defense center because he would just be in the right spots and get the puck to the right people at the right time. Where Rafa, when he plays up, that's when he scored most of his points. When guys were out of the lineup, uh, if you're playing, playing up the with the big guys, line, yeah, if you're playing on the fourth line, we got a lot of guys that are more just about defense on our bottom lines, not as much uh, offense. So that also factors in. Like Bunneman's another guy that does all the little things right, but he's not going to wow you on the points. Andreoff is the same way. And Carson Trewinsky is a guy, if you want to see people getting bashed around, you might want to start playing a little bit more. So 
because I that's the one Carson's guy you game. have on your yeah. taxi squad that does just run at people and is a bigger version of Ronaldo, pretty much. So if you, I guess if you want to actually use that, you can use it. I, I agree with Steele, though, as far as Raffle, like as far as you said, like uh, like his time's up, like he almost needs to move on. Like a guy like Bonham and like, you know, he like Raffle. How long has Raffle been up? How long has have Raffle been playing on the Flyers? You know what I mean. So like these other guys, Seven like years. that, years. yeah, like they're giving these guys chances, and who knows? Maybe you know Bonneman will start putting the puck in the net. Raffle has proven that he doesn't, and like yeah, I get what you're saying with the fourth line and everything too. And I, I actually like Michael Raffle because I do like the guys that do the little things, especially when we turn over the puck 15 times Dang in a period. <laughs> but. Don't get me wrong. I, I like that. But, yeah, it is hard to – But for $1.6 to... $1. million a year, <clears throat> to have that low kind of production and not really – and being more defensive-minded and not really – you know what I mean? That yeah. kind of money, we can get somebody like a Bobby Ryan who n- not only is going to put, you know, maybe 20 points on the board for the year with 12 goals and a couple of assists, but will also help to do those same little things that Raffle's doing picking the pucks mm-hmm. up from the turnovers, yep. you know, and potentially dropping the gloves, sticking up for more players, because we have nobody on this team, nobody to do that. Nobody. Nope. Yeah, other than Andre off a couple of times when he's been in the lineup for five games. Um, so that's but that's always I, I have a question right for there. you guys. I have a question for you guys. Tell me something. How is it that a coach continually puts the same guys in the lineup, although in different positions, still the same guys and not getting any better results. What do you guys think about that? That's what Jamie, I think Jamie tweeted it. I think he was the one that tweeted it. AV can only do so much at this point. You can't, it's like, it's like with baseball. If your if your general manager doesn't trade anybody, all I'm going to do is keep putting the same Dan lineup out there just with different order. So it, it's it's eventually, hey, get your head out of your rear end, Chuck. Do something for me. Like, that's kind of – because you can't – once you have the guys, if they're just falling flat on their face, you're only going to be able to move them around so much. They're still the same guys on a different line. Only certain guys, when they're in a funk, go on a line and then all of a sudden hit the Disney magical pixie dust – with somebody and then take off and barely struggle from that point forward. That's not common. Like Connor Sheary was someone like that when he was in Pittsburgh in the bane of our existence where he would be down, then he would go up a Crosby and it would be like he was the best thing since sliced bread for two weeks. So, like, the, the Flyers could use guys like that, too, which they have in the minors. So that's why I agree a Raffle-esque guy could move on because you have Linus Sandine who pretty much plays exactly like Michael Raffle who came over from Sweden and is 24 and not 31. So you can do that. Tanner Lozinski came out of Ohio State and is a guy that was supposed to be a quick riser because even though he was a six-round pick, he came out at 23. He mm-hmm. already looks pretty darn good. So you have some guys that can replace Raffle in your system now, Wade Allison would have already made the NHL if he hasn't got it, if he didn't get injured in his career. He sniped a goal yesterday that looked like he was already ready for the AHL, uh, uh, coming back first game from injury. So they have guys already. Raffle, you could just move for another pick asset, and you would be good too. And yeah, then I'm, you could see what okay. your guys down there can do okay. in your actual okay. final. So what, what do you think, Mike? What do you think about the fact that? Look, I understand that you get a certain pool of players and this is what you get to work with. But it just seems like he just it just seems like the coach just seems to pick the same players every single night and he just moves them around in different spots. Well, yeah, so one thing I will say that's what I have to say. One one thing that I will say is that I like the fact like a lot of people were very mad when TK sat, a lot of people were very mad when uh, Phil Meyer sat. I like that kind of thing. Obviously, the guy who just said, I want to trade players before the trade deadline <laughs> likes the fact I sending agree a with message. Yeah. Sending a message. And, it, you know, it, go, it goes a long way or it doesn't. But either way, you see the result. You see, oh, I, you know, I lit a fire under this guy's ass. He's starting to play well. Or I lit a fire under this guy's ass. He's not playing well. He's never going to play well. You know what I mean? Or something's wrong. So I, I do like that. I like giving young guys a chance. But sticking with the same lines when it's not working, I get what you're saying because it's like, 
if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it is broke, friggin' fix it. You know what I mean? But um, I, I don't know. I feel like there's a sense around the Flyers right now with the coach and the players, and I don't think it's just in, in their interviews. You know, when they say, like, you know, we're excited, we're optimistic, and we're on Twitter being like, why? 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 <laughs> and you're, you're, like, you're like, oh, he wins an Oscar for that one. There's a part of me that thinks that they're not acting, that they actually, they actually think we have a good team. And I think that Elaine Vigneault, well, he's a great – I think Elaine Vigneault is a very good coach. I think he knows what he's doing. There's a, there's a big part of me that thinks that he actually is just like, our team is this talented – we're not putting it together. Just keep grinding it. Keep putting it together exactly the same. And, you know, the production is going to come. And I don't see a problem with that. But it's the, the question is, is when? Like, when do you start changing things up? When do you start saying, maybe this isn't working? So as far as, like, why is he doing it? God knows. But when will he stop? Or when will it start working? God knows that, too. God only knows. <laughs> I, God only knows. I, I don't know. Yeah, when I also think is not an AV question, because yeah. when it's a general manager question, right. you can't just – you don't trade your own players. So, the, the, like, as a coach, that that's usually – that's only been right. the case, I think, one so time. Goes, think so so that's, the, the that's the thing. Let me pose a thought. <clears throat> if a player isn't playing well and you keep rotating him in and out of the – you keep rotating him around the lineup – what message is that sending to the other players on the team? Well, the problem is we don't have much other. Like, like I said, you could put in oh, wait. Trubisky. I got you. I got you. Guys have been injured. So, like the guys that would have been first to get called up, Shusko again was injured. I uh, got you. Spring, I think went back down. Lazinski was uh, still working his way back. I understand, but here's my thing. I am one of those kinds of people where I like to see the same lines every night. And when I see the same lines every night, that to me builds chemistry. That to me builds. I just feel um, like that's not the league anymore, though. Because if you watch teams that run out the same line every night, they don't the whole game. It doesn't matter who would even Boston. Boston. But I mean, you start off with through. the same line and then you move things around to, to play to the game situation. OK, but you start off consistently like. The fact that you have Giroux and and Voracek and whoever, you know, that line has stayed. Why? So th- I'm I'm very confused about what A V is that. doing. Okay. Yeah. To me, it doesn't make any sense. Where you have some guys like Bunham and Tarwinski that I mean, even John A. Wisdom, gosh, put somebody in. Do something. Because you keep putting Braun, you keep rotating him, you keep rotating Gustafson, you keep rotating Hag, you keep rotating the same guys, and nothing is happening any different. We're still getting the same results. Our goalie is still getting peppered, okay? They're still letting way too many uh, turnovers happen in transition, and there's not very good passing. Yeah, but I would say the defense is all on Fletch. Because that was, you even talked about it in a past videos about how signing Braun was a knee jerk reaction to this yeah. one. Time, where um, AV, my, we don't even know because there's also no connections even when you go to cover the game right. with the locker room. We don't know if there have been backseat conversations where sometimes if you're in the locker room, yeah, you can yeah. kind of pick up on inklings a little bit better. Um, where AV might have been like a Joe Girardi, how he is in baseball, where he has no problem going right into the office saying, look, we need X, 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 and X. And if you don't get it from me, I will eventually tell the media, well, what do you want me to do? <laughs> like, And then basically put it all on your shoulders. So that's why I think it's going to come to a point eventually, because I feel like AV is not afraid to do that to kind of like he already kind yeah. of did it with the third defensive line. He said, look, nobody stepped up. And this was like a month ago. And he said, nobody stepped up. Nobody's taken this role yet. Nobody still has stepped up right. and taken a role to be consistently on the third defensive pairing. They're still usually graded one of the worst in the NHL, no matter who's in that pairing. So you definitely need another defenseman, and that's on the GM, not the uh, coach. When it comes to the forward lines, you could mix them up again. I think it's, I think it's they want to see guys 
and get their legs back under them and Lindblom and Patrick who haven't even looked as um, smooth since coming back so they don't want to move them up lines yet and I think that kind of limits what you're able to do um, with your line pairings as well in the time frame you're waiting for that to happen but I'm just saying that for my own opinion I don't have sources or anything for that uh, what's I your guys was... go ahead Mike Sorry. I just wanted to ask everybody's opinion on that but go ahead man yeah, no, that, that's that, that's interesting. But I was going to say, what's your guys' take on, like, we score and then they score three times? Or, like, we, we score once and, like, two seconds later they score. Like, what, I know that, like, our defense hasn't been that great and, like, our goaltending hasn't been that great. But what's the, the, like, what's the correlation between us scoring a goal and then them scoring, you know, a goal right away? Or, and that's been happening, like, I mean, last game was a great example of it where I think yep. twice at least, right? They scored like two minutes or less after we scored. Like what yep. I know like I said, I know we don't have the best defense, best goaltending right now, but that's that's like a weird is that just coincidence or what, what like what is that? Cuz it's been getting on my nerves and and it's Mentality. probably been on your nerves. Yeah, yeah, I think I think because teams put their their top line out right after getting scored upon and to try to, to build that momentum. And we're either still looking up at the Jumbotron or uh, we're still high-fiving players on the bench or, or um, I, I, I don't get it. I, I don't understand. It's like we're just kind of like, yeah, we just scored. Oh, they scored. Yeah, yeah, that's what it feels like. <laughs> you know like. what I mean? Yeah, like, what it feels like. <laughs> like, wait, I'm still celebrating my goal. Wait, wait, wait. You yeah. know, you know, you know. So, so yeah, I think it's mentality. That's pretty much what you said in that type of uh, answer too, where <laughs> you score, you scored, um, and then you go, you basically just get loose, and then it's like, oh crap, wait a minute, that's Alexander Rove-. Like, like that pissed me off yeah. the other day. I cleared it off the board, and How Alexander. You let that Rove-. guy just skate he around. How do you let that happen? I can't into imagine a time coming off the boards, and I'm just like. That no, 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 no. Like that, like, like that just scares me for the next time we play Pittsburgh. Now that they're getting hot again, you're going to see Crosby just be like, Hey guys, I'm wide open for the eighth time this game. And you're just like, Pass it to me. What the hell yeah. is wrong with you? Hi, I can't <laughs> imagine how annoyed our announcer is at the stadium. He's calling a goal, and like every other, every time he's while he's calling a goal, the other team scores. He's like, Oh, here we go. I got I got to say their goal now. He's probably he's probably flustered up there, honestly. I, I guarantee you, Jim's probably not AJ real happy. Was at the re- he was pissed at the refs in that one game too. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Look, well, no, I'm talking about the guy at the stadium who's like goal scorer. Oh, the- oh, 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 yeah. yeah I forgot. Then, I'm trying to remember look, his name. Uh, and then they Nolan. scored. No one, no one. Yeah, okay, Nolan. okay. So uh, Lance said that he ran into him at the last game. That he oh, was talking he? to him in the elevator. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah cool. I never met so. him. Uh, but yeah, look, Flyers need to do something here, man, because we're already on the outside looking in, and the teams that are playing ahead of us are just playing better and better, right? And if we don't start putting some games together and start winning some games, guess what, boys? It's going to be no playoffs for the Flyers this year, okay? Mm-hmm. Yep. And 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 until that magical when happens, there, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Until that magical pixie dust flies around, mm-hmm. we're we're just looking at the same thing, man. Hey, NBC. Oh no, that's ABC. I was gonna say who. I, I thought NBC. I was thinking they were in the Disney. You can't get the magical pixie dust. Who? Somebody bought NBC recently. I have to look. I have to remember. Oh, okay. Comcast. It was Comcast. Comcast. Yeah, Comcast. Yeah. So well, that but, doesn't help us. They don't have any cartoons that they yeah, wrote no that cartoons about that, so. magical pixie dust. <laughs> yeah. Um. So come on, Comcast. Get get working on some good cartoons. Um. But <laughs> the. the uh, Actually, don't do that. They're probably yeah, right. But anyway, um, moving on, we went late in this one, so we'll have a separate trade deadline one when we go more in depth about trades, so we can actually get in previewing the game for you folks. And we thank you for watching the video. As always, like, comment, and subscribe here, and to Steel Flyers YouTube as well, and check out the Steel Flyers. Dot com and um, Mike, do you have anything you're doing by yourself right now? Uh, just Instagram and Twitter, Rick. My last name, Rick Flyers, R E I C K. You could check that out. I just pretty much tweet about how mad I am when we lose. That's it. <laughs> oh. 
And then we'll wrap this up with a quick, like, five to ten minute uh, preview of uh, the New York Rangers at Philadelphia Flyers. It does, or at Rain Flyers at Rangers, reverse that, we're at MSG. Reverse what I just said. Um, And it seems like now that Vladimir Putin is not threatening his life anymore, um, Artemi Panarin will be back on the ice for the New York Rangers, which congratulations to him because Vlad is a ass. Um, so uh, that's all I have to say about that, and we'll move right past that. Um, so moving on, we'll start with the New York Rangers, and um, you can tell I don't like politics, right? But anyway, we'll start with the New York Rangers and go into who we think are the main cogs you have to watch on this team, and I'll start with Steele on this. Who are the big guys to point out that the Flyers also might really have to watch just because they're Flyers killers, but might not be amazing otherwise? Yeah, no, I'm with you on that. Um, I, I think it's going to be who's going to start a net for uh, New York? Yeah, or, or, Kate or Gorgiev, yeah. Yeah, Gorgiev, okay. So that, it, that's... I don't know which one yet. I don't know which yeah, one. so depending on who's going to be in net, I think is going to be a key factor here for the Flyers. Look, the Flyers have offense, have never doubted the fact that the Flyers can't hang with the top offensive teams in in the league. That's never been the case. However, you're going into New York Rangers now where they've had Panarin back for a game, okay, and they've reshuffled things around. Zibanejad now suddenly, hey, he's on the score sheet with two assists, right? Again, whatever Pirlo and I insult him Right. They moved Lafreniere yeah. back to where he was. OK. And so now th- that team now, I think you're going to start seeing that team start putting some more wins together, especially now that uh, Panarin is um, not being threatened by Putin anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, still, it's like that well, helps I say whenever we uh, discount somebody and say they're not performing well, they're all of a sudden, at least for a couple of days. Uh, turn into the best things since sliced bread. We'll see if Zibanejad pulls a Matt Duchesne or actually keeps this. Uh, well, they're playing the Flyers snow. tonight yeah. now, so yeah. so yeah. Zibanejad's going to yeah. probably be a star of the game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Most likely. Yeah. Okay, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, well. well, my player to watch. My player to watch every time we play the Rangers, just specifically because well, one, he's good overall, but he is fifty times better than he usually is against us. Is Chris Kreider? Um, he was going to one. Yeah, Kreider's that's, that's what I was going to say, too. Yeah, tremendously wide. And uh, Steele knows how much I love this guy, so if I can throw him into any conversation, I'll find a way to throw him into, uh, nudge him into the conversation. He's also having he a health to say his name. Uh, look out for Ryan Strom. <laughs> Ryan Strom is a very solid center in the lead that keeps getting better as time goes on. He took a little bit to take off, but he found his itch in New York, and it seems like he's continuing yeah. to group so you want to look out for him and obviously now that it seems like he's getting a little bit more fire in his belly you got to look out for laffy a little bit more than you did the last time we played this team um mike who would be your guys for the rangers that you think stand out that you have to look out for well i was just gonna i was gonna say chris Kreider too just because i mean last time we played them didn't he have a hat trick he had a hat trick last time we played so i mean yeah yeah, and he, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was four four three. Flyers had four. Kreider had three, and uh, and uh, what's it called? Uh, but yeah, like you said, I mean, there's like those guys who just go off. Like when we played the Capitals, like I know Ovechkin's a maniac, but when we played the Capitals, like you knew Ovechkin was going to score. He always does. Like well, you know what I mean? It's Nick Jensen's Drew Doughty. Oh yeah, yeah, and Nick Jensen yeah. really scores on us now too. That's great. That's that's another great thing. But uh, what's it called? Um, but yeah, I mean, Kreider got to look out for Kreider against us, and then um, yeah, I mean, just those top guys, Panarin, Zabanajad. You know, you never know, especially with the way we've been playing. Bushnevich just, too. We skipped. Over. Yeah, Bushnevich. Yeah, Bushnevich has been all right too. Yeah. Yeah, watch uh, out for him. Exactly. You know, the yeah. other thing too is that um, Strom has been playing well. Kreider's definitely been playing well. You know, look, they've got. We all felt that New York, if their goaltending was going to be on point, that New York had a shot at trying to potentially make it at least to try to sniff the playoffs. Okay. Yeah. Now, they've played one game. So the Flyers have one game in hand, but, but the Flyers are four points ahead of the Rangers. Okay. So I, I'm with you on this one, Mike. I would love to see this is – 
I mean, every game now for the Flyers is kind of being that must win game kind of thing now, mm-hmm. because every time you play a game now, it's a four point swing. Yeah. Right. And you yeah. lose two games to the Rangers and, and, and they, and they get eight points on you. Suddenly now they're ahead of you. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and they're knocking on Boston's door. Right. So yeah, there you go. You know, what's really sad too. I tweeted something about uh, the fact that we had such a hot start and it's sad. I didn't, I didn't mention this in the tweet. I just said that we're fortunate that we had such a hot start because now that we're going downhill, we still have a good chance to make or a chance to make the playoffs. I didn't really think about the fact that it's, it's really sad that we had such a hot start and now these games are that important. Like if you told me, you know, 10 games into the season that we'd be having this conversation right now, yeah. I'd be like, oh, no way. We had such a good start. We're definitely not going to be yeah. in a must win situation every night, but that's where we're at. And, it's, and, and it's we're definitely just is. now getting halfway. Yeah. Yeah. And that's mm-hmm. sad. That's really sad, especially with the start. You know what I mean? That's just, and it's, it's, yeah. things, but we're disgusting yeah. behind the teams ahead of us, too. Yeah. I mean, and like you said, they're getting better as they go, and we're probably getting worse. I mean, you know. It seems like the Flyers have to figure something out, whether it's uh, calling up more people on defense. Uh, Pouillot looked great for the Phantoms that has NHL experience. Yeah. Uh, so And he's also not 34 like Nate Prosser, who has been playing decent, but you've been giving him a shot. Why not give a 27-year-old another shot? I mean, um, you know. So I think uh, he could have a chance to come up. Um I've actually really liked uh, his consistency with Lehigh, so um, I think they should give him a chance if we keep showing defensive struggles soon to try to be a part of that third pairing. Um, But moving in now to the Flyers, who are guys that we look to step up in these two games since we're talking about we bat back to back against the Rangers Monday at seven and then tonight at seven and then Wednesday is at seven thirty p.m. So people know. Um, what do we think is going to be one, the two key factors team wise to play, to beat the Rangers? I'll start with Mike on this one. And then about three players or however many players you want to name that you think can step up in order to do those things. Uh, well, I'm going to start with Voracek. He's been flying. Like he's, I think he's been pretty good actually. Like, you know, (laughs) he gets, he has his critics out there. I think he's been good. He's been busting his ass. I feel like the last couple games at least. So if he can keep that momentum going, put the puck in the net a couple times, I think mm-hmm. that'll be good. G had that nice goal against the Caps. I think uh, if he can get that momentum going, that'd be really mm-hmm. good. Um, and then I'm just going to say more of like a group. We kind of already touched on it, but like the Lindblom, Patrick, Raffle. I think Raffle comes back tonight, right? I think supposed I saw somebody. To, supposed yeah, to supposed to come back. But those like, you know, third line, fourth line guys who we say do the little things. If they can put some pucks in the net every now and again, especially against the Rangers here, that'd be that'd be great. If they can step up and um, you know, yeah, it just needs to be like a nice mesh between, you know, our goal scorers and our guys who don't really get on the board too much. If we can get that, we're in we're in good shape. And that's that's for every game, you know what I mean? <clears throat> so Yeah, man. That makes sense. We, Go ahead, we don't steal. we don't have an hour. This would be another show on – no, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so I, I think what really needs to happen here is I think that I, – I can't necessarily peg down three players because we need to peg down the fact that you can't be leaving Carter Hart to hang out to dry because his psyche is very fragile right now, okay? And it seems that way. That's just the perception that I get that his psyche is kind of fragile and they're trying to give him some time off and trying to take some pressure off of him and whatever, whatever. Okay, great. Here's the thing. If you don't take care of business, if you don't take care of your business, stay out of the box, right? Play a full 60 minutes like you guys are all talking about, right? And this is like one of the first times now where this team has been completely healthy, okay? Since the team has come back from COVID, We really haven't had that many guys out from injury for the most part. We've had a pretty healthy team. So what's the excuse? Right. I I, I just don't I just don't see that the moves that are going to happen tonight are going to be enough. 
Yeah, the only thing I have seen is before COVID, we had everyone go out with COVID. I was talking about it with my friend Zach um, the other day who used to write for Flyer Nitty Gritty before he got a day job. Um, <laughs> and uh, he, um, we were talking about that where the Flyers played through their flaws and were still able to find ways to win where once you lose that momentum because you're out of a lineup for a while, it's hard to get that back when you already have flaws because you're playing through flaws. Yeah, yeah. It's like if you run a company that has a bunch of flaws, but you're just like a genius at being able to mend all those flaws, and then you're sick for two weeks, when you come back, all hell might be breaking loose in that company because nobody knows how to mend those flaws like you. Well, a lot of the guys that went out with the veteran group, when they came back, it seems like they can't figure out how to mend the flaws like they used to before being out. I don't think that I don't think that's an excuse. It's more of just a fact looking at the way that they're playing. It just seems like that's the way yeah. it has yeah. been uh, since guys have come back. I also think the one thing I think lineup wise, AV really has to adjust is you're playing more rivals this year. Why are you not putting in the more physical guys like the Trewinskis of the world? That's the one thing I think you need to adjust. You're playing guys that you know are going to come right at your throat. It's like cutthroat kitchen, basically, hockey when you play your rivals. So that's why I think you need to be able to put in those bigger guys. And you should get ready for that because all of our guys coming up are huge that are supposed to be pretty solid in the future. Even Shushko's, um a guy that can shoot that six foot, if he can become like 185 or something compared to about 179 or 190, that would even be great for him. Strom's a big kid. You have Forster, who you drafted in the first round, scored his first goal the other day, by the way. Congrats to him. Uh, is a uh, good kid that's big. Uh, Line at Sandine, 6'1", and LeBurge is 6'1". And uh, obviously saving the best for last, Ratcliffe, 6'6". Six, six. So... Excuse me, you got a lot of guys with size coming up. So get used to it. Start playing people with size that check people. So that's the one thing I think you need to do. <laughs> Can we have some? The other thing you need to do is let Alex Lyon play more than a damn period. I don't I don't know what they're doing. Like yeah. you sent the guy down, the game got postponed. <laughs> And you're like, okay, cool, we played one period in 365 days. He's all set if someone gets injured. It's like what? Yeah. Like, 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 I don't, I don't know what they're doing with how they're managing the goalie taxi squad because I've watched so many other teams around the league do that significantly better yeah. than the Flyers because they're move their guy up and her play a couple games or they're make sure their guy goes down to the AHL to play at least like three games, not a period that gets postponed and then go. Okay, he said if everyone gets injured, it's like. Probably not. He played one period in a whole calendar year, yeah, but you know, if you said, I guess he's. But that's just uh, me, like you said, with the uh, people from Slapshot Sweethearts the other day, Meg and Shannon. That's me getting on my soapbox a little bit with the um, team. But it, it, some of the stuff they're doing just makes no damn sense whatsoever right now, especially what Chuck Fletcher's doing with maneuvering a goaltender for one period and then going, yep, it seems like he's ready again. It's like. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, so as uh, we close out here, though, I basically, you guys covered all the main points of players. Somebody I'd look to continue to step up is G actually has looked pretty good after coming back from COVID, where everyone else looks like they're still kind of railing and trying to figure it out. Yeah. So if he can keep that up, that would be obviously mightily helpful. And I look for Cabell to look a lot better, who's looked off recently. Albe Kubel was a big reason why the Capitals scored one goal. He was, I think it was like 30 seconds late to his shift. Yeah. And then the Capitals got in on basically a power play that was supposed to be a five on five. And then they